Hey guys, what's up? It's Nicole, your detective here, investigating your favorite albums. And today, I'm going to do an album review, uh, the second review of the day, an album review of Viagra Boys Welfare Jazz. So, um, yeah. Viagra Boys is a post-punk, art-punk band from Stockholm, Sweden. And this is their sophomore album, Welfare Jazz. Um, I'm still not used to using my new phone to re record my reviews because I look way closer than I'm supposed to be. But uh, yeah, anyways, Viagra Boys, right, Welfare Jazz, right, this album. Uh, yeah. While I am a sucker for post-punk music, I love a damn good post-punk album. This this album is a little bit underwhelming for me, especially in my first few listens, because instrumentally, it's just a little bit messy, a little bit here and there. At many moments in the album, they sort of dabble into this country flavor and style. Which is kind of confusing. I mean, sure, it plays into the narrative of the album, but they're not necessarily all that great in making country music, and this country flavor on their rock music didn't really pan out all that well. And I think uh, while I like how, um, you know, sort of goofy uh, and, and sort of douchey, the lyrics on this album are because again it plays into that narrative i still think there are a lot of moments on the album where it's a little bit too goofy or a little bit too cartoony for its own well-being so the album starts off with ain't nice which is actually a really awesome album opener it's really groovy it's really fun it's really energetic it has these squeaky bleeps that kind of reminds me of Oh, Green World off of Demon Days by Gorillaz, but they're they're well incorporated into the track. It's really groovy. It's really catchy. The bass riffs are driving and the lyrics are wacky. It is a really memorable and fantastic opening for the album. And then we have these interludes. There are like three or four interludes on this album and they're really short, you know, and they're also kind of experimental. Nothing all that crazy. We have the second track cold play and uh it piqued my interest turns out it's just 30 second 32 seconds of saxophones um but i guess uh it's it's whatever the third track is called toad and i am a little bit on the fence with this track on one hand i love how messy and lousy this track is instrumentally but at the same time it's so sloppy and grotesque it's kind of falling apart and, and not even in an artistic way but what really makes this track kind of head scratching for me is the spoken word because this track is actually a spoken word track on top of some really awesome lousy punk instrumentals and the spoken word has this really thick southern american accent to it and it's just kind of corny, in my opinion. Last night you felt like a hundred bucks, baby. And this morning when you cooked the breakfast, it felt like it came from a restaurant from the big sky. And then we have the lyrics uh, for the song itself. I don't need no woman. I don't need no man telling me what to do. Telling me when to brush my teeth. Telling me when to go to bed. It's... Again, it plays into the overall narrative of the album, even though the narrative isn't really all that apparent or obvious or anything, but essentially the narrative is that this one dude, this one dude from Southern America, he's like rebellious or independent, but at the end of the album, he's like, you know what, I'm gonna, I'm gonna listen to others, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be with, uh, be with someone I love and just go out to the country and live there. Uh, it's such a weird narrative that's, not necessarily socio-politically conscious or all that in-depth or interesting. It's just that one thing. And it's a little weird. It's a little head-scratching. But still, at the end of the day, instrumentally, I still like the track Toad. The track Into the Sun, however, is one slow, bland, sluggish track that's slightly psychedelic and not in a good way. 
I like how the lyrics are sort of about remorse, you know, oh, I, I, I'm I, sorry, I, I was such a scumbag towards this girl. But uh, yeah, the dense vocal effects did not really enhance the vocals at all. It just made it a little bit more annoying. The track Creatures, at first I kind of enjoyed it, but more the more I listen to it, the more I think it's just kind of mediocre. It takes a bit of a narrative detour where this track kind of talks about like underwater creatures and we get these pulsating new wave synths which are really fun but the me uh, but the melodies and the chord progression on this track at the end of the day is still really really tame and mild and we also have the track six shooters which is one really groovy straightforward instrumental rager with punchy drums driving bass riffs as well as bouncy pianos it's a really fun track and i absolutely love it and after an interlude, we have Secret Canine Agent, which is 1 minute and 40 seconds long. And it's a bit of a wild, crazy, wacky synth punk track with scratchy horns and echoey vocal effects. And the track is, of course, about a dog. The band loves dogs. But uh, yeah, even though at first I didn't really enjoy it all that much, at the end I love how wacky and crazy it is. And the scratchy horns on this track actually matched the wild elevated energy of the band really well. And then we have the track I Feel Alive, which is another really head-scratching moment on the album for me. Essentially the band goes into swingy drunken blues rock. And I like that flutes are being incorporated into a post-punk song. I always love it when that happens. And the growly manic vocals are pretty nice as well. But overall, it just fails to sort of catch my attention at all because it's so stagnant. And also, there is really nothing all that special about the melodies of the track at all. It just feels really average and basic. The track Girls and Boys, however, is one hell of a rickety, groovy dance song. Again, very energetic and fun, very exciting as well. We have droning bass and dissonant... We have a droning bass, some dissonant sound effects, and it all matches the really dizzying sort of vibe that this track brings on, and ultimately it's really catchy. And uh, also really wacky at the same time, you know, they talk about what makes the, their, their, their rock spirit going, you know, the girls, the boys, the drugs, uh, the dogs. And the final two tracks on the album are extra confusing and, well, not confusing, but more like underwhelming for me. First off, we have To The Country, which is, of course, a country song that's kind of mellow kind of slow and the whole track sounds like a build-up and it sort of builds up to nothing it, it the pianos and the instrumentals in general they get louder and louder and louder and louder it's like it's anticipating for a huge drop but it never really reaches that point it's just so uncathartic and yeah, I like the unsettling vibes in the chorus, but overall it's just really... <sighs> the last track, In Spite of Ourselves, is actually a cover song, covering a an endearing song uh, by John Prine. And I like that they are making a cover of the John Prine song with a comedic attitude, but honestly, it's a little bit too comedic for their own good because it comes off as kind of goofy, kind of cartoony, kind of corny in an unjustifying way. In a way it sounds kind of sloppy here and there and not really focused at all, almost to a point where it's kind of like a parody, parodic I would say. And uh, yeah, it's just not a very strong finish to the album. I mean, it, the album could have ended off with To The Country and the narrative would have just ended there. But this track just sticks out at the end, I guess. So uh, yeah, um, while I enjoy some of the nasty, grotesque, uh, douchey moments on the album, I love the instrumentals. Uh, in general as well. I love how messy and lousy they are. 
the narrative is fine even though it's a little weird it's a little oddball and there are also moments where the band is just a little too cartoony a little too goofy for their own good so i'm just gonna leave it at that my favorite track here is ain't nice and my least favorite is um into the sun i am giving viagra boys welfare jazz a <laughs> strong six to a light seven out of ten or maybe a decent seven i don't know so have you listened to uh welfare jazz from one to ten how much did you rate it like a like and subscribe if you want more and thanks for watching yay i will review eminem's uh side b music to be murdered by also uh raf ferreira's bob's son uh, also a surprise classic album if i have time